Catherine Elizabeth, a wedding photographer based in San Diego, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about how you can get your fiance more involved in the engagement session and get them more excited about the process. If you have a fiance who is not very excited about the engagement session and you want to get them more involved in the planning for it and get them more excited about the photos, then these tips are going to be for you because the last thing that you want is a fiance who is not eager about these photos and they don't turn out as well because they weren't excited about them. They show up to the session and they're just not very fun to be around and they're not really very much involved in the process and they're just not very much there and they're not very excited. So you don't want that at all. And if you haven't already watched my video about grumpy grooms, I will link it down in the description below, but I'm going to give you guys some tips for how to get them more involved in general, which will hopefully get them more excited about these photos. So my first tip is if it's not too late, get them on the phone calls with your potential photographers so that they have more input on who to hire. You want them to get excited about these photographers, whereas if they weren't involved in these phone calls, then it's gonna feel like the photographer you hire is a complete stranger to your fiance. So if they have a little bit of input on who they want to hire, they're gonna be more excited to meet this person when the engagement session comes around. Now my second tip is when your photographer is giving location recommendations for the engagement session, give your fiance a choice or maybe give them two choices that you've narrowed down to and say, which location do you prefer? Give them two choices and ask them which one they prefer. So by giving them some choices, they're going to feel more involved and they're going to feel more excited about their choice. Now, obviously don't give them choices that you wouldn't want. So give them some choices that you yourself are actually excited about. So whichever one they pick, you are actually going to like. So they're going to have a choice and they're going to feel more excited about their location. They're going to feel like they had an involvement in this. And when they show up to the choice of the one that they picked, they're going to be like, oh, I picked this. This is a great location. They're going to feel excited about it. So that's something that you can do to get them more involved in this process. The third is the fact that you invested money in these photos. These photos are forever. This is not just like something that you spent two cents on or you clicked on your iPhone camera or you just hired a little friend for $5 to take pictures of or hopefully you didn't do that. These are important photos. Stress this to your fiance. You guys invested money in this. This is part of your wedding, even though this is not your wedding day photos, or maybe it is and you're, you're not watching this for your engagement session, you're watching this for your wedding, you invested money in this. Stress this to your partner. Tell him or her that you really think that these photos are so important. They're gonna be hung on your walls or somewhere in your home for decades. This is not just something that you're gonna look at for two seconds and throw away. These are important photos and you need to make that very clear to your partner so that they really understand the value of these photos. And if they understand that, then maybe they will be more inclined to get involved with these photos and they will practice with you. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second. They will practice with you and get prepared for them and put more effort and investment into getting engaged for these photos. So they really need to be involved in these photos and understand that they are an investment and they are important. These photos will live on forever. My fourth tip is to determine if your fiance is self-conscious in photos. And if they are, then practice makes perfect. I hate to use the word perfect, but practice makes perfect. So one thing that you can do is help your fiance practice. Figure out some of the things that make them self-conscious and try to practice posing with them. So some of the things that you can do for that, I'll give you a few tips here that might help. These are just kind of generic things, but maybe they will help your fiance a little bit. So one is posture. So the best thing that I can do for most people is to remind them to hold their shoulders back. Even I do it a lot, I'm doing it in this video. Hold your shoulders back. That makes a huge deal in photos, especially if you don't have a photographer that does a lot of posing, remind each other during the session to hold your shoulders back. So during the session, tell each other, hold your shoulders back, but practice ahead of time. So practice a couple of times before your session, maybe schedule a few um, nights out of your week to practice leading up to the session where you go over a few things. So tell them to hold their shoulders back 
So that's really huge. Hold your shoulders back, practice what that feels like. So that's one. The second one is the placement of the chin. Now this happens a lot more with men, I notice, than with women. Men tend to do like this in photos. They, they really like to get like their face away from the camera as much as possible, and it's not very flattering. So with my men, a lot of the times I tell them to bring their chin forward and down. Not down too far, we don't wanna create it like a squished chin, but instead of this, bring the chin forward and down. It might feel uncomfortable, but it looks great. So practice that with them and you can be their feedback. Give them lots of praise. Praise is very important. Don't just critique, but give praise. Build up their self-esteem. But have them, if they're doing this in photos and you can see their chin getting smushed and you can't see a defined jawline, help them bring their chin forward and down a little bit. It might feel weird to them, but it's going to look better. And then the last one is to help practice a natural smile. If they're just like this in photos, that doesn't look good. So have them think of something funny or tell them something funny and help them elicit a natural smile. Have them practice in front of a mirror to help think of something funny and help build them a natural smile. So it, I don't know if that was natural or not, but help them build a natural smile. So see, this is more natural for me. So help them build a natural smile and then that will help them during their session. So you can use these cues and reminders during your session and help build this confidence ahead of time and that will really help them out during their photos. So maybe they just don't wanna take these photos because they're self-conscious. So practice ahead of time. I cannot stress this enough that practice makes Perfect. All right, my fifth one is, do you have a little bit of a shopping budget? Go out and buy a new outfit that will help them feel confident. Coordinate with your outfit and have a nice set of outfits together that makes the two of you feel really confident and sharp. Get a nice outfit that's going to look good with your location so you guys look really awesome and it makes you feel really confident and comfortable together. That's going to really help build self-esteem and make you two feel like a million bucks. My last tip, and I mentioned this in my other video that I talked about, is to compromise if all else fails. Tell them that if they can do this session with you and get through it with a nice game face and get through it without complaining and put on a happy face and just make it seem like they're having a great time, then you will do something for them that you normally don't like to do or you normally don't do and you will do it with a smile and like you're having a great time. So you will trade something for them if they can just get through this and make it seem like they're having the time of their life. So do a compromise with them. This is my final tip for you guys. Just get through it and do it as a compromise. So that is the last thing. If all else fails, do a compromise. So that is pretty much it for you guys. I hope that you enjoy these tips. I hope that these are helpful. I know it can be really hard not having your partner be on the same page about these photos, but photos are really all that you have when the wedding is left over. And maybe you can tell that to your partner. It's your evidence that this thing even happened besides your memories. It is what you have after everything is gone. The flowers are gone, the cake is gone, the food is gone, the music is gone. Photos are everything. So this is an investment. The engagement session photos are really important too because it's photos that you guys have together to commemorate this time in your life, not in wedding clothing. So it's really important. All of these photos are extremely beautiful and touching and they commemorate this time in your life where you were together and you were extremely happy and very excited about this milestone that you are celebrating. So stress this to them. You can even show them this video. Show them me talking about all this stuff and you can help them out. There's also some posing videos that I have in my archives so you guys can go check those out about different things to do with your hands and things like that. So you can show them those videos and you guys can practice all of these things together. So I hope that you found this helpful and I hope you can now get inspired to get your partner on the same page as you or at least close to on the same page as you for your photos. I hope you guys like this video. Be sure to subscribe if you are not already subscribed. Like this video, comment down below which tip was most helpful, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!